<laughs> the earthquake simulator is just a vibration generator with a bit of metal and some rollers so it can just vibrate backwards and forwards. I want you to have a little gamble with yourself. Think which one of these three buildings would I like to be in? Is it one of the tall ones or the short one? Is it the one with the most mass or the one with the least mass? Okay, not very scientific. I'm not controlling many variables here, but I'm just going to start an earthquake at a very low frequency. And you can see that they're all vibrating a little bit. The tall, the short one of this one isn't vibrating much. They increase. Actually, the tall one with the most mass is pretty much still. And it's the tall one with the medium mass, the less mass, that is vibrating the most. That looks pretty uncomfortable at the minute. And at a higher frequency, I'm getting more so. But then at a very high frequency, it's actually the shortest one which is doing the most vibration. That's the one I wouldn't want to be in at this point. So what this shows us is that our ideas are not always what they seem and actually the vibration of these buildings um, doesn't actually depend only on how tall they are. And we could do a whole range of heights and or a whole range of masses and do some quick science with that. So I'm not sure exactly how these two variables I've talked about, mass and length, are related, but I'm guessing it's something to do with this. This is the um, equation time period is 2 pi root m over k. So this will say very simply, it will say that uh, longer time period for greater mass. I think that was the case. lower frequency, it's the one with the more mass. Yep, that makes sense to me. And also it will say that um, lower spring constant, higher time period, so uh, less stiff, higher, uh, lower frequency. Well actually this one here is going to be less stiff than the short one because it is, it is shorter, so length does come into stiffness if it's made of the same material. And that's the case as well, that less stiff, higher time period. So now we know something about our um, oscillators here. I've got four different lengths. I've tried roughly to make it one, uh, three quarters, half and a quarter. Uh, have a little predict what you expect that to do. Remember, we thinking it relates to this equation here and if you double the length you half the spring constant so you can you can imagine what you're doing to that one there you might want to pause have a little predict just think or just think well which one's going to be the lowest frequency or the highest time period i'm going to start at the lower frequencies Okay, that one is resonating about half a hertz, I would say. So about, no, maybe a little bit more than that. You'd need an oscilloscope to do this accurately, or you could actually use the video if you were feeling super clever. That one is resonating about one hertz. Third one is resonating. Somewhere in the region of one and a half. That one somewhere around two. So this time we've um, halved the mass, so again starting at a nice low frequency. We're not expecting the time period to double, sorry the frequency to double, but we are expecting it to increase. I think that's definitely increased, we're already about one and a half there.
And this one somewhere in the region of maybe three, maybe four, maybe even more. But there you can see the tall tower is almost exactly standing still, isn't it? Perfect. <laughs>